Yes. Um, preparing this presentation, guys, has been quite an experience. Um, it's supposed to be inspiring, no pressure. I've followed some really good speakers. Thanks, Jackie, no pressure. Um, but I found it interesting, and it's something that I would suggest you do. Because not until I did this presentation did I realize all the ways that God has been in my life and how one thing from back then would affect one thing up from now. And it's just, just been a, a real interesting effort. That said, I'll be really glad when it's over. <laughs> About 25 minutes, is that what we're at? Um, I am going to use notes. It's my story. You'd think I'd know it. I'm used to speaking to groups, but there's a real pressure speaking to friends who know you. <laughs> and you'll see again. So I want to make sure that I do that. Um, we still have the free choice to mess up, and that's one of the things that's cool about being Christians. But I came away with the understanding of just how many times God has been with me. This past week was a difficult one for us, like many of them are. And uh, God got my attention and said I needed to make a few changes in what I had planned to present. You'll never know what I plan to present, so you're going to get what I've got up here for you. And by the way, because I'm a photographer, you get pictures. The theory behind it is you're going to look at the pictures, not me, and I'll be more comfortable. Okay? <laughs> that said, here we go. This, by the way, these are pictures that I have taken. And this was taken, it is a plumeria given to me by a young Samoan man who was murdered in his parents' yard in San Diego about nine years ago. And to me, this was the anniversary of his death. The flowers were crying. Truth I've learned today, nothing like saying this is my life story and I'm going to tell you what I've learned and then we're done after the second slide. Um, life isn't always fair. If you don't know that, sorry, I've got bad news for you. It's also not always easy. Everyone has challenges. We have got to all be empathetic because you don't know what that person coming towards you is dealing with. So be empathetic. And I've learned that God's walked with us. And as we know from that delightful picture when there's only one set of footprints, he often carries us. I'd like to start tonight. By the way, notice you can't go back and change the beginning, but I learned when I was at Life Sharing, you can rewrite the last chapters. I want to introduce you to my mom. This is uh, Betty Jean Shelley Simpson. She is my guardian angel. I know little about her, except that she's half my DNA. I sincerely hope she is proud of me, and I hope she's proud of the mom I became. At the age of 25, my mom was killed in a car accident with her dad, my grandfather, somewhere in the middle of nowhere, Kansas, west end of nowhere, Kansas. I was 20 months old at the time. I was in the car, the only family member who didn't have major injuries. I wish I remembered her. I honestly do. I know that my mom was beautiful. This is where I usually say, doesn't look anything like me. My dad used to say, and many of you that I've known for friends for a long time, dad would say, yeah, she takes after Aunt Nellie. I don't know how Aunt Nellie ever thought about that. Uh, I do know my mom was beautiful. She named me after her doll, Sharon Kay. She loved me very much, that I know from my other family members. I know she was strong-willed. She married my dad against her mom's decision. And uh, I know she was petite. I wanted to be married in her wedding gown, only the veil fit. <laughs> we also learned years after this from a total stranger that my grandmother had come to pick her up and was taking her home to divorce my dad. Imagine how different my life would have been had that been the case. Something else. Now, I, I like to think mom was strong. She would have gone, yeah, right. Um, but who knows? Um, don't you? He traveled a lot. He traveled a lot. See, now I like this audience participation. <laughs> now, I have to admit, while mom was alive, wasn't I cute? I showed this to my daughter tonight, and she goes, Wow, is that you, mom? Because when my mom died, my grandmother was taking us back, wanted to. Um, have custody of me, but she was too ill. And so my dad's mom loved her dearly. My dad's mom raised me. Now, mind you, um, she was British, tough as nails, said she was five feet. She wasn't. She was 4'11", but none of us disagreed with her. You just didn't do that. And uh, 
get where I want to go. I was a tomboy after Graham started raising me because Graham had boys, not girls. I'm fine with that. Um, Graham left her job. She left her home. She left a boyfriend, all to raise an energetic, very curious. There's some things that have stayed the same all through my life, <laughs> two-year-old. Despite being in her 60s, she usually was able to stay ahead of me. And I still remember that. She had a wooden spoon. I remember that, too. <laughs> Um, there are several mini milestones along the way. You know, we go through life and we don't understand when things that occur to us become a milestone. But as a five-year-old, I wanted siblings. And I couldn't understand why Dad and Grandma didn't have any. <laughs> they really tried hard to explain it to me, but fortunately when I was eight, Dad told me he'd found me a sister. Remember, I was a tomboy. She was a tad of a sissy. The first time I saw her, she had a white rabbit coat on. Really? But it was okay, because I showed her the two little frogs that I named after her and Mom, Vicky and, <laughs> and Betty. She's going, hmm. She was very impressed, too. I don't think my dad told me that I got a bonus mom with the deal. But those of you who know him, Mom's name also was Betty. He said it was much easier when they had the same name not to get them mixed up. <laughs> Thank heavens, mom number two entered my life because at 13, she saved my life. I was born with a congenital kidney malformation and had minor health problems all along, and people said it's because she was in the accident that killed her mom. My grandma by then was Christian scientist, and she would kind of go, mm. and mom said, hogwash and kept going until we finally found a doctor that figured out my kidney had abscessed. Mm. And uh, when they removed it, I had about six months to live. And that was at 13. I still remember saying to the doctor, that was back when they did full kidney, and I said, how long is the scar? I'm 13. And he goes, did a really good job. It's about 12 inches. <laughs> he didn't tell me that sometimes the side falls. It didn't, thank heavens. But uh, that was a major milestone. One of those coincidences, you know, coincidences when God prefers to remain anonymous, that would end up being a real positive for me later in my career when I worked with organ donation, because I understood about it, and no, I will not be a kidney donor. Just saying that, just saying that. Um, more milestones off of this. By the way, that's Sir Punky Regardless, he came with the deal too, I was so impressed. Sir Punky Regardless. Um, I had a really good time with school. My sister didn't. I loved that. Um, so in high school, we were on uh, double sessions, and I called every store that was opening up in the new Los Arcos Mall. We lived in Scottsdale, Arizona. Los Arcos Mall has been raised for a number of years now. Does that tell you how old I am? Mm -hmm. um, serendipitously, I got a job at Paradise Camera for a dollar and a quarter an hour. Are you impressed? And photography has become a very important part of my life. These are just some of the zoo shots I have fun with. Many of them are taken with my phone. Sharon and I have compared phones and things for years. But that was a life-changing moment for me to get that camera store job. Life-changing in more ways than I expected. In college, it led to me getting a job, my first full-time job. I was the chief photographer for the Tempe Daily News. I was the only photographer, but doesn't chief photographer sound better? <laughs> and there, I met a young man on the left. Anybody recognize it? No. Um, I'm 65 now. When did this happen? Um, he was the education reporter when I first went there. A year later, we were, married, we're married, and he was my editor, and that was really awkward. So um, we decided to go separate ways, and fortunately, I found my way into health care. Again, these little milestones that you don't realize because there I could use my talents and I could still use my ethics. Someday I'll tell you about my stint at Ramada Inns. They asked me to lie to media. I don't lie. So we didn't get off very well there. Um, you will all recognize the 1970s yellow. Mm -hmm. I think Larry had sideburns in that picture. And that is at the Scottsdale Nazarene Church you about that in a few moments. In 78, we had the chance to come to San Diego. It took us about 13 seconds to say yes. The guy said, don't, don't you want to think about it? I said, no, because 1978 was the year there were a, 
100 days over 100 degrees in Arizona. There was no decision. We were just fine with that. Um, when we moved, we moved with our 10-month-old. Those of you who know my son, he's six foot five now. It takes me no end to show his junior jogger picture. He would be embarrassed to death. I love that too. This April will mark 40 years that we have lived here. And we were greeted by Aunt Flossie. Little bitty lady about yay high, Flossie Shelley Dalrymple. She was my grandfather's sister. And she loved my kids. She had no kids of her own. When Aunt Flossie died in 93, well, there's more to that house. Imagine a pretty craftsman underneath that. <laughs> Something to the picture. She left us our family home. And while I was cleaning it out, I came across this picture of my mom standing at our fireplace. This was taken when she was 14. And it just brought home what home is all about. We still have, by the way, the mantle on the clock. And uh, it's one of those treasures that you have. Our next years were a busy blur. I have to tell you, a total of three kids, Larry, an editor at the Union Tribune, me working first in a computer store because I love technology, and then I went back into healthcare. I went to Grossmont. It sounds like I can't keep a job, but realize this is the condensed version of my life. I uh, went from Grossmont to Children's. I was at Children's six years, then became the director of PR and marketing for Palomar Pomerado. And another one of those milestones is coming along. But before I share that with you, I want to tell you, each place I learned something that was a treasure for me. At Children's, the kids don't look at what they can't do. They look at how to do it. What an attitude. Don't look at what you can't do. Look at how to do it. So I figured Daryl probably wants to talk a little bit about faith, you know, where my faith <laughs> journey has been in this. Just seemed like I should. Um, faith has always been a very important part of my life and it's just been part of the fabric of me growing up. I uh, finally rested from my grandmother my the Bible that mom carried at her wedding, mom won. My gram was a staunch Church of England, and I still remember standing next to her as she belted out onward Christian soldiers, and off we went with our black upright piano. My parents didn't attend church, but faithfully, pun intended, they drove us every week to the nearby Methodist church. And that was just a part of our life. Drop us off, pick us up. Dad, you could hear him say this, Sharon would say, I believe in God, I don't believe in churches. <laughs> okay, Dad. Uh, during college, I grew disenchanted with that Methodist church. That By then it was on campus. And the altar call every Sunday, the altar call was to go to the, the nearby gas station that would give a discount to the church and give a donation to the church. And I'm going, this is what I was interested in. And about that time, I met my favorite Lush. That would be Pastor Lush. He was the um, preacher at the Nazarene Church near my home. And I loved him. He was so good with college kids. He's exactly what I needed. We were actually married in that church. That was the picture of where we were wed. And then, a short time later, we start now, you can pick your own adjective, but rigid, structured, conservative. It's a good way to describe Nazarenes, and we couldn't do it. So I have to tell you, this led, Larry used to have the funniest mustache, isn't it? I love it. This led our journey to UCC, and we went to the really cool steeple, white steeple, you know, like the pictures from back east in Tempe. And Larry had been raised Assembly of God, and the minute he turned 18, he ran, absolutely ran. And so I was quite proud of the fact that he came back to church with me. So I tell his mom one day, I said, Mom, good news, Larry's going to be baptized. And this wonderful woman who said very few negative things said, sprinkling doesn't count. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Um, we've been at KCC several times in our journey. I think on the first night that somebody <coughs> said, oh, how long have you been at KCC? You know, they were at the 10 o'clock service and I'm at the 8.30, so we may as well not have been at the same church. And I said, which time? And they kind of looked at me. Uh, let me update this for you. My dad, after my mom died, came over here and actually um, on our wedding anniversary joined the church here. He used to sit right in our pew. It's right behind you, Tony. You know, it's right where you have to be. Um, and in this picture, it's kind of a fun one. I had fun pulling some of the old pictures for you. 
It's a picture of Pastor Wargo as he was baptizing Andre, Alexis' grandson. And Andre asked my dad to stand with him as his grandpa. So this church has been very, very special and helped us so much when dad was so ill at the end. Um, while we were in churches, we always dragged our kids there under the theory that it would at least give them a firm foundation. And I'll tell you how that went, though the story's not done. I haven't given up yet. Uh, more life save, uh, changing milestones on my journey. That sister I wanted so much developed breast cancer. Probably in her about mid-30s, I was trying to remember now, and we managed to get through eight years and three returns of it. This is a picture of her uh, with our kids. Uh, we only had the two at the time, and her two kids. Uh, they are at Jackass Flats. How's that for a thing to show in church? They are at Jackass Flats, Arizona. And uh, on uh, New Year's Day in, 2000, uh, in 1997, she passed away. And that was one of the hardest times. I will never forget getting on that plane to fly home from Arizona and realizing she was gone. My mom died that day. She just lived five years longer. And so it was an interesting time. So Vicki died on uh, New Year's Day. We have a problem with holidays in the family. Mom one died on Labor Day. Mom two died on Christmas Eve. And I was just walking into this church on Christmas Eve 2001 when I got the call that she had passed away. And my husband said, you want to go home? I said, go home. And the hugs here that were just incredible. Mom, by the way, always said she looked up to Matt <laughs> in more ways than one. Mom was petite, and that was, uh, they were over here for the graduation. KCC has helped us through so many things, and until you stop and take a look back, you take it for granted, and you can't. One of the things I warned you guys, one of the things that has been most helpful has been the KCC Book Club, <laughs> a.k.a. the Book Chicks. I don't know where that name came from. But Jan Morgo, whose husband was the uh, pastor at the time, brought us together. And then I think he retired and she left. And we have been together, I want to say, 15 years. Guys, this picture is at our house in North Park, so it gives you an idea of how many years ago it's been. I don't think any of us have aged. We'll all go with that. <laughs> Keep the lights up. <laughs> um, right, right. See? Um, but they have been such a help to me, especially in 2003 when my daughter came home from Berkeley. And uh, I will share more with that. So thank you, book chicks. I can't imagine life without you even now. It's a little easier than it used to be, but then, even then it was harder. Um, I also, Tony asked me tonight, do you still sing in the choir? No. Sorry, Tony, I don't, and I tried to tell him, Tom, we have no choir at the 8.30 service. That, that didn't work either. But the choir was one of those milestone changes for me that I didn't realize at the time. When Vicki died, I couldn't do health care anymore, and I literally left health care 30 days later. I went back into IT and did that for seven years. I was so angry that she had done everything right. She'd had mammograms, she'd done everything right, and she died. And so I went into IT. After seven years, yeah, my heart's in healthcare. And there was a job at life sharing. I didn't know what life sharing was at the time, but two of my fellow sopranos, Mary Kunanen and um, Nancy Roberts, worked at UCSD. They knew what life sharing was. One of them was the head of the transplant program at UCSD. Nancy was the head of surgery. And they were my references. How's that for a reference for life sharing, which is the Oregon recovery organization for San Diego County? Let's see if I have. <coughs> life sharing was life transforming for me. And I left there just uh, July 1 after 13 years. Um, it gave me the chance to work with donor families who've lost a loved one. And in the midst of their loss, they said yes to helping somebody else. Uh, I also worked with recipients who should have died. One of my favorite recipients hated speaking, but he nearly knocked me off my feet one day. He said, we were planning our fun my funeral when we got the call. I had the privilege at Life Sharing of introducing 45 donor family members to their recipients, their loved one's recipient. It was a miracle for me, and it started here in the choir when we used to have the choir thing sitting up there. Um, my volunteers taught me many things, among them the fact that enjoy the little things because it's the little things that are the big things. 
It's the birthdays. It's the trip shopping. It's not maybe the trip. It might be. It's the little things that you take for granted, sharing a book, hearing a phone call, that type of thing. Uh, this, by the way, is a picture of the donor wall. I stayed at Life Sharing and was able to coordinate the donor wall, which is a recognition wall. It has butterflies on it. It is beautiful on their website. We actually dedicated a um, butterfly to Dad. He was a cornea donor. It was so important to him. You know, when you know me, watch out, because you're liable to have to volunteer with me. Dad volunteered with me and uh, said to me one day, Honey, why didn't they ask us when your mom died? Because in 1954, they didn't do organ and tissue donation. So he volunteered with me. And uh, to be able to put up a butterfly on his site that says his legacy lives on means the world to me. Why the butterfly? Because when the caterpillar seems to be facing death, it is born to new life, a beautiful life. So that's the story behind the life-sharing wallet and how the KCC choir got me there. Um, additional lessons I've learned along this way, I like the Facebook hoodie posts. So uh, you'll have to take a look at some of them. They are just a delight. Have you ever looked back at your past and realized it was God that kept you alive? Mm -hmm. um, be silly, be fun, be different, be crazy. Be you, because life is too short to be anything but happy. I am a strong person, but every now and then I need someone to take my hand and say everything will be all right. It's going to segue where I'm going. I've learned that God does give us more than we can handle. I don't care what that other saying is. He gives us more than we can handle. Uh, I have learned that it's okay to be mad at him. Somebody went, oh! trust me, he already knows you're mad. He already knows you don't understand. And he's big enough to be able to take that. Um, I also have learned here, this came from my sister-in-law, that God promises us a soft landing, but not necessarily a smooth path. I also learned that rainbows don't happen if you don't have rain. As much as I'd like to have sun every day, you don't appreciate it until you don't have sun every day. There's something around time change that I'm sure I can weave in here, but we'll leave that alone. Um, and look for the beauty and the inspiration. We tend to get tied into that news, and it draws us down. Take a moment, step back. There are positive stories. Look around and see. And these are just, again, some of the, like I said, with me, you get pictures. Some of the pictures that I've taken. The one on the upper left was a rose outside of where Aaron had ECT for eight horribly long years. And look at that beautiful rose, one of my favorites. The calla lily, okay, you guys all walk by it. Easter Sunday, right down there. Easter Sunday. Um, the squawking jay up there, oh my God, I love them. There's people that consider them vermin. Not very wise people. I love them. He's telling me that I need to get more peanuts. Uh, daisies at Balboa Park. The upper right, I'm at an event, and this little girl looks at me with all the wonder that you see in her face. Isn't she amazing? I have no idea who she was. She went away as fast as she came. And that, by the way, if you've never looked in a hollyhock, is what the center of a hollyhock looks like. Had no idea. Um, that said, quite candidly, I love being a mom. I am very pr proud of my trio and have learned so much from them. My kids are my blessings, but they are also my challenges and my everlasting worries. One time I said to mom, I think I was 32 at the time, and asking for advice, and she, I said, how long, do I, how long am I going to ask you for advice? And she goes, honey, you're a mom for 50 years, and then you die. Wasn't the advice I was looking for at the moment, but it was a little bit too true. I never expected the discrimination that each of my kids would face. Never expected that. I've struggled with the hard lesson that moms can't fix everything. I still seem to think we're supposed to, and I can't. Uh, even when I so desperately want to, I can't. I still remember a 16-year-old Matt telling me, Mom, you can't stop us from getting hurt. And that hurt to know how truthful that was. Our youngest daughter, Kelly, I laughed when I told my kids about this, uh, uh, what I was doing. They said, what problem did Kelly have? How quickly we forget. Kelly totaled her car. Kelly doesn't remember where she was. I will never forgive AAA for coming and fixing her tire and letting her drive off. It wasn't their fault, but 
She made a decision that week after she, t it wasn't her car she totaled, it was my car she totaled, thank you very much. She made a decision that she had to make changes or things were not going to go well. And she made those changes. We celebrate that day, March 31st every year. This year it will be 15 years. <coughs> With that change, she got her act together. She went to Berkeley for undergrad in psychology. She went to UCLA for her master's in social work. And this young lady who I wondered, Erin one time said to me very wisely, Mom, you still have to love her. <laughs> you don't have to like her, but you do have to love her. And these are the same kids that went, what color problems does Kelly have? Um, she's doing well now. She is the Veterans Justice Outreach Officer for the uh, VA in Riverside County. And when her vets say to her, you don't understand, yes, she does. Now, this also puts into the concerns that I have as a parent. You heard about the shooting in Yountville this weekend where a vet killed three providers, like my daughter. That's the population she works with. Uh, one month after my sister died, my son said, Mom, I need to talk to you. And it was one of the most uncomfortable conversations I've ever had because we get along beautifully. And he was struggling. And he says, there's something I've got to tell you. And being the mom, being ever helpful, I said, you totaled the car again? Which he had just done. Not drinking, but he totaled the car. He says, no. And I'm looking at him, and he's still struggling. And I said, you got a girl pregnant. And he laughed. And I thought, oh, God, I don't know what's coming, but help me. And he looked at me, and he said, Mom, I'm gay. And I managed, with God's help, to say, so what? And it was the perfect thing to say. This is a picture of my son. As I showed these slides to Erin tonight, because I honestly wouldn't let her come with me. As I showed them to her, she says, what do you mean second wedding? Matt and Josh exchanged vows before it was legal to be married. Yes, we did march in the No on 8 campaign. And they made the mistake of asking me to speak at their dedication ceremony. They got 1 Corinthians 13, thank you very much. Um, this was the second one, and I, I laughed at him because um, Josh's mom and I were their witnesses, and I said, how gay is that to have your mom there? And it was one of the most wonderful sermons I've ever had. Kelly, remember these kids I dragged to church all the time? Kelly says to me one day, Mom, I pray, but God doesn't answer. And I had a very hard time explaining to her that sometimes no answer is the answer, and you have to keep praying. That's about the end of the discussion we've had, but we keep going that. Matt says to me one day, Mom, you're very intelligent. Thank you. Why do you believe in God? And I realized at that point that my son looks for God with his head, not his heart. And as long as he's doing that, he is having a hard time finding. So being ever wise, I looked at him and I said, Okay, Matt, if you're, wrong, if you're right, oh well. If I'm right, uh-oh. So we're going to continue to discuss that, and he knows that church is very important to me. Matt considers faith to be a crutch, and I have to tell you, it's a crutch I am grateful to have at times. Now, I am extremely close to my middle child, and we laugh because Erin would have been the middle child whether we had more kids or not. She was a handful growing up. Went to Berkeley, as Matt said, very granola. And many of you know her. She is such a sweetheart. Um, she attends KCC with us, and with her permission, and only with her permission, I'm going to share her story tonight. As Sharon so eloquently put it, Sharon, it's your story too. But I would share it only with her. She, I am very impressed and very open to share what has happened to her because there is so much confusion and myths about that. After studying a year in Paris, earning, she, by the way, is still fluent in French, it comes in handy occasionally. Um, earning two degrees with honors at Berkeley and being accepted in the master's program at Oxford, we were planning on which house she was going to live in at Oxford. Erin was diagnosed with schizoaffective disorder. I will never forget that call from Berkeley that said, you need to come up, your daughter's in the hospital. Well, we had been through gallbladder surgery, and I'm going, now what? And they said, you need to come up. And I'm going, now what? And I learned 
The doctor there told us that schizoaffective disorder was a time bomb. She'd always had it. There was just a matter of waiting for it. We had very little warning. What is it? My overachieving daughter that goes to Berkeley and was going to Oxford, thank you very much, has schizophrenia, bipolar disorder, and probably what to me is more dis uh, disabling is her anxiety disorder. It is not unusual for me, guys, of anything I expected, it's not unusual for me to get a text that says, Mom, I want to kill myself. Or a phone call that says, I need to go to the hospital. Or, and this editing is mine. Or lowercase g, God, is telling me the only way to have peace is to kill myself. To her, that's the voice of God. We consider this lowercase God a damnable imposter, but he's very convincing and real to her. Can you imagine if you thought you with faith, she with faith, that God is telling you you have to kill yourself, that it's the only way you're going to have peace? We have tried to explain to her, God doesn't need your help, honey. It's not real. We've been through all of this. Daryl has been wonderful to help. Uh, as Daryl knows, he uh, spoke on demonic possession one day. And I usually try and give him a warning when I know she's going after him. So she's up to the front before we've even gotten into the aisle, and she goes, do you think I'm possessed? And I'm looking at him wondering what he's going to say because I have to tell you, I think schizophrenia is possession. To me, as a mom, it feels like it. And he says, no, and you can do this. And she was happy as a clam and walked off, and I love you, Daryl. <laughs> um, I have learned the past week we were with crisis counselors two days in a row. And for the first time ever, it didn't result in a hospitalization. Uh, to me, God with the capital G, that's his grace. I now know far more about mental illness than I ever expected. She has been going for 12 years to a wonderful place called the Meeting Place Clubhouse. And I served on the board there a number of years. Um, it may surprise you or it may not surprise you. As I'm open with people, I am surprised when they'll say, I know my sister's missing. I know my brother has. I know my child has. I know we had a family member who died. It may surprise you that mental illness affects one out of four people somewhere during their life. It may surprise you that the average life expectancy for someone with mental illness is 57. Such a challenging life that it is cut short, sometimes at their own hand, sometimes not. I cannot tell you how many of her friends at the meeting place have killed themselves, despite all the help that's available. I have learned that people with mental disorders face ridiculous stigma. Every time there's a shooting, every time somebody with schizophrenia is on TV, every time, every time there's the assumption, how many times have you heard we shouldn't let the mentally ill have guns? That will, I almost started down the path on how many people I think should have guns. I won't go there. Um, I've also learned that it is a significant financial hardship, both for the family that loves her and for her. She can't drive. She can't work. She can't, 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 can't. This is a genetic illness. And I realized that first day when I was told what the diagnosis was, that that likely meant I would have no grandchildren. We will have no grandchildren. Because it's a genetic illness, our other kids also have decided not to have kids. But I have seven granddogs. <laughs> Doesn't make up for it. But you know, it was interesting to me at the hospital, they asked us, who in your family has schizophrenia? It's a genetic illness. We have no idea. They used to be so embarrassed by it that they hid it. I think it may have been that Aunt Nellie that Dad referenced to me. She lived <laughs> over the garage in the family, but I don't know about that. Uh, Aaron shares our faith, but with the cruel twist of a voice that is an imposter God. Church to me, probably church to you, is a safe place, a sanctuary. For her, it's a trigger. And so every Sunday when you see us here, that's one brave lady that I'm sitting next to. One brave lady. Sometimes just being in church is frightening for her. And arguably, Erin is one of the kindest, bravest people that I know. I am incredibly proud to be her mom. Uh, she shares a number of other loves aside from faith with me. And she is my camping buddy, and she is my photography buddy. If you notice the Stigma Stomper shirt on, we both have our cameras. It's part of uh, what it is. People laugh at us because to go on a walk with us involves at least 10 steps every half mile. You know, we have to go to the next picture. 
Um, she still laughs at me on this one. We went to Yellowstone the day after I retired this past summer, which was just an incredible experience. And I'm in the car watching this bear come straight at me. And all I'm saying, experienced photojournalist, 4,000 pictures, pay a publish while I'm in a newspaper. Bear, bear, bear. And Erin laughs because she got the picture of the bear coming at mom. There was one moment, you who think that you'd run into the building without guns. Oh, wait a minute, that's Mr. Trump. Um, when there's a bear coming at you, my inclination was to run. I was in the car. <laughs> Come on. I didn't run, and he fortunately went around us. Um, Aaron has named our RV Hope. We drive the Hope RV, and uh, it's because camping reminds her there is hope, and that's very, very special. We'll often take a picture out behind the uh, RV. She loves having coffee in the morning or her hot chocolate. And people said to me, why do you always take a picture behind the RV? Where the view is. These are the little things that you've got to know. I thank God for the sunrises we have. That's our new RV. We are just learning how to do it. Uh, together we've had so many sunrises and so sunsets, and I hope we have even more. We have set a goal to visit all of the national parks, and to date we have been to six. And you have no idea what a big deal it is for us to do longer than a weekend. My book club knows that. We did 10 days to um, Yellowstone. We had one challenging day. We got through it. Uh, in about three weeks, we are going to try a trip to New York and DC. I'll let you know how that goes. The last time I planned it for our 40th wedding anniversary, both Larry with heart problems and Aaron were in the hospital on the same day. Thank you, different hospitals. We didn't go on the trip. I have told him this time, if you end up in the hospital, Kelly and I are going anyway. <laughs> we'll see if I do that. I retired, um, you know, as, as we look at this, and it's an important process, do it. Do it and talk with your family about it. Um, I've learned so much about where God has been with me when I haven't realized it. Uh, I retired early nine months ago, in part because I watched a lot of people younger than me die and become donors. Uh, I didn't want any regrets. Dad retired the day my mom died. That's sad. He had to, and that was the part of it. Um, I'm enjoying a transition. Tom and I talked about this. I'm enjoying a transition. That's why I have my Ars Electus shirt on. If anybody needs IT, HR, or web support, I have a card for you. And uh, <laughs> let me see, in the Methodist tradition, I'll make a donation in your, na in your name. Uh, Ars Electus is my son's company. It has been such a blessing to work with him, though he seems to think I can do things I don't think I can. Oh, well, we'll figure this out. Uh, Larry and I, this month, will celebrate our 43rd wedding anniversary. We're still behind the two of you. 51 is what I've heard. Mm-hmm. Um, there are times that I didn't think we would make it. Teen years were particularly rough for us. <laughs> um, and Aaron has been pretty tough. Uh, I can't imagine doing this, though, without Larry's help. Uh, Larry also is my journalist, and he is, by default, a glass-half-empty man. And by default, I'm that optimistic, glass-nearly-full person. It's worked out pretty else well for us, though. Uh, what else? I know we're going to have tough days. I know we'll have good days, and I know we'll celebrate the both. I know that the capital G God, my God, will continue to remind me he's there when I forget because I forget to ask. Um, and that it does no good. As a parent of a disabled child, I watch Ben in the morning on Sundays, as a parent of a disabled child, you wonder what will happen to them after you're gone. Now we have made tremendous plans for it. UCSD, thank you God, thank you choir for getting me to life sharing. UCSD will continue to cover Aaron's medical after I'm gone because she was disabled as a minor. Ask me how I feel about UCSD. Love them. Um, as you know full well, uh, we have an annuity for her. I can tell you the difference between the third party uh, special needs trust and the first party special needs trust. We've had to hire help on that to make sure she's taken care of. Matt will help with the financial side, keeping all of her records straight. And Kelly, bless her heart, will take care of Erin. And that helps me. I do know I can only do the best possible that I can do now. I want to thank all of you tonight for being part of my journey. I am so grateful for my faith, my family, my church, my friends, 
you and our saint with Aaron, I will always be grateful to you and for hope, which we all need to have. These are other pictures of places that I found. For those of you who know, I used the pictures from the Good Shepherd's window when Lou uh, Wargo retired. So any questions that I can answer, I answer, I'd be glad to help. And thank you guys for listening. Thank you.